What's up, guys? It's your boy, Frank, in the house. I have two very exciting upgrades. One of them I needed because it broke on me the other day. The second one is just for fun. So here's the first thing I got. I got a new clutch cable, not the quadrant. My clutch cable popped on me when I was taking my girlfriend out. Next thing I know, I hear a loud pop and my clutch engagement point is at the floor. I could barely get it in gear. So I had to limp it back home in second gear. Also, my clutch cable was very hard to push in. Like it was super hard. And every time I hopped in somebody else's car, like my dad's car, for example, his clutch was super smooth, super easy to hit in. The first clutch cable that I had, that stretched out to the point where I couldn't adjust it far enough for it to work properly. So I went to my boy, he gave me a used adjustable clutch cable and the clutch still felt the same so i thought it was just a normal thing but um i think that clutch cable was just on its way out for a long time and then finally it just finally gave up and um oh yeah the second thing so the second thing i got is this two-step box yes sir i do have a free i do have a free flowing exhaust but i don't think my car will spit flames so uh this is pretty up close and personal but as you can see I'm already underneath the dashboard. So I'm gonna just try to slip this cotter pin out and see if I can just slide the whole quad right off. All right, it's literally been like 15 seconds. It was just that easy. It just had, I had one little clip that I had to pull out, quadrant slipped right off, rotated it, got the cable off, put it back on, put the cotter pin back in. Well, not cotter pin, it's like a, um, I don't know what it is. It's not a cotter pin though. I'm kind of worried because I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be two. And maybe I was just being a lazy, lazy piece of crap and I just didn't put the second one in, but. It's been working perfectly, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm not even gonna worry about it right now. So now that I got the car in the air, you can go ahead undo the clutch cable at the fork and then um yeah we'll just move this clutch cable and install the next one As you just saw, got the clutch cable uninstalled from the transmission, uninstalled from, from the pedal. So now all we gotta do is get this one little bolt down here to the bracket, undo that, and then we'll be able to pull the whole thing out, see how it look. Just got the old cable out. Now I'm about to show you exactly how hard it is to push this thing in and to pull it out. Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. It's still harder than a new cable I got. Yep. I already showed you how hard this one is to push in, right? Right, you see how it gets caught up like that? This new one, none of that. Nice and smooth. I could push it in with one finger. Look at that. It's the next day. Yesterday, I was getting absolutely thrashed around by this uh, this clutch job. My clutch cable was like really like still super tight. It wasn't as grainy as it was before, but it's still super tight. And I did some research, and some people actually put white lithium grease, and they just run a cable up and down until they see it come out the bottom of it. They said that helps a lot, and also you can also use um, motor oil. I don't know why my pressure plate is so tight. It really confuses me because it's been like that since I bought the car. And my pivot ball is worn out, but it's not really worn out to the point where we really change the geometry of the clutch fork that much to make it that hard to engage. So um, yeah, I'ma just do the oil trick and see if that works. And once we get that all buttoned up and stuff, then 
I'll run y'all through the two-step. Step number one, jack the car up at a wildly precarious angle. Step two, place the jack stands. Now that that's done, we can go on to step three, and that is become a magical wizard and fast through through everything and explain it at the end. The cable is lubricated enough to where it'll slide easily in and out and I can even rotate it. So this is what I came up with. I just attached my drill to the clutch cable. So that way when I'm putting the white lithium grease in there, I put it in there and I run the drill and I just work it in and out, in and out, in and out. I've been doing this for about, I wanna say 15, 20 minutes. And it's starting to come out the end, but just barely. So I'ma just, I'ma keep doing it until, you know, I can really see it like that. Now you see my, my glove is, if the camera wants to focus, come on. See how my glove is dry? and clean then we're going to touch the cable and see if we get any grease on it there we go that's what we want to see so the whole cable is lubricated up in there so i'm gonna go ahead hook it back up i'm gonna go inside hook that up i'm gonna spray some silicone grease on the clutch pedal assembly and uh we're gonna sweat the all right so we're back in the car i hooked up the clutch cable i tried it out it is definitely a thousand times better people tell you not to lubricate the cable technically you're supposed to use the graphite powder i used white lithium and i just as you saw earlier all i did was spray it in work it back and forth work it back and forth once it got lubricated enough to where i could spin it by hand i hooked my drill up to it and i spun it in reverse i just kept feeding it with lithium grease and working it back and forth it took me about half an hour to do it until i saw it come out the bottom buttoned everything up hopped back in the car and now man it's like Butter. This is the easiest it's ever been to depress my clutch. You are a failure. Nobody loves you. Die. Since I bought the car, now it's super easy. I recommend doing it the right way. The right way technically is the graphite powder. I did it with white lithium grease. You know, I'm not driving through sand all the time. Plus I have a cover on my transmission. I know a lot of SN95 guys lose that cover, but luckily I do have that cover on my transmission. So the only thing that's really getting on it is some fine clutch powder, clutch dust. So I don't really think I have anything else to worry about. I'm still gonna spray some silicone on the clutch pedal assembly, button up everything, and then I'm gonna work in to wiring up the two-step. Have some fun. I just got back from the store. I had to go get me some quick spices because I got my kit used. And your kit, if you buy it brand new, you will have a quick spice in the kit. I'm about to try to start the car to see if it runs properly. If it doesn't, I just have to go out there switch two connectors and after that it should run perfectly fine i have my own custom switch that i made last night no one ever uses this coin slot so i just thought i'd grind it out put a switch in there so i could turn the switch so i could turn the two-step on and off sounds like it's doing fine Installing this two-step box is really easy. So off this two-step box, there's a wire loom that comes out. I have it tucked pretty good. So unless you see this box, nobody would know I got two-step in here. So you have these wire looms. These go back into a thicker wire loom down back here. They split off into two. Each goes to each side. So you have one over here, one over there. Basically, all it does is it connects between your ignition coil and your actual harness. So this, this is the two-step harness here. This is my actual harness. So it just clips here and it clips here. So it just goes in between your harness and your ignition coil on both sides. So you just plug all eight of them in and then you just have this grounding wire. I just grounded it to my fender. And um, this blue wire, I had to run this kind of funky. There is a grommet that you can go under the car and use, but my grommet is like super dry rotted and I just didn't want to go up under there, possibly tear something up. So if you do start your car after you install the two-step and it runs like complete doo-doo butter, all you have to do is take these two connectors, one, two, and swap them. That's all you gotta do and it'll run perfectly fine. Me, I had to run perfectly fine on the first try. I was really lucky. So as I was saying, this blue wire is for manual cars and this white, this blue white wire tuck, that I tucked up in there, 
that's for automatic cars. I don't know what wire that plugs into. I have a manual, so I used the blue wire. So what I did was I took this blue wire, fed it through that hole, fed it up here somewhere. Fed it, oh, there it is. You can see it right there. I gotta hide that. I fed it all the way through here. I had to take all, all this trim off. I had to take all of this off. And then I fed it behind this rubber piece, if you can see in there, down here, over the pinch weld, down the other side, and I just have it right there. It goes under here, straight to my, well, not straight to my clutch pedal. It goes under here, across my dash, as you can see, to my center console, wired it through here to the switch, and then from the switch, wired it back under my dash, to my clutch pedal somewhere up there right there it's really super easy super straightforward you only have to tap into one wire and that is your clutch switch so i'm gonna run it back step one connect all of your ignition coils to the two-step box step two find where you want to ground the wire at step three route the wire inside to your clutch switch and that's pretty much it just three steps super straightforward guys and then it works perfectly so i'm gonna show you how to adjust it right now so in order to adjust your two-step what rpm you want it to activate at you take these two dials right here. You see how one says 1000, the other one says 100. These are in reference to your RPMs. So right now I have mine set at four and five. So that's 4,500. So I have mine set at 4,500. I'm probably gonna turn down like 3,500, 4,000, because I don't really need it that high. It just sounds good to me. And then once you have everything hooked up, what you can do is have a buddy of yours or set your phone up and record. And you wanna see this red LED come on whenever you fully depress the clutch. And if you fully depress the clutch, this red LED will tell you if your two-step is active or not. If you don't see that come on, check all your wiring. You might have a bad ground. Sometimes these grounds don't really work like that. Just find another bolt. Um, make sure your wiring is secure and tight and then try it again and it should work. So I do have a couple clips of me trying out the two-step. I have one at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, I believe. I'll show those clips in a little bit. Um, I have yet to try it out on the street simply because I don't want to upset my neighbors and stuff like that. So might do that later on. If I don't, then you'll catch me in another video and I'll do it then. Other than that, pretty straightforward, guys. I hope you hope you have good luck installing your two-step. I hope you have fun watching me install mine. I surely did. I can't wait to try this thing out. And that's all I got for you today. Peace.